Hi, everyone. Thank you for attending today's webinar, Accelerating AI Training Models for Faster Research and Drug Discovery in the Cloud. When you join today's webinar, you select a join either by phone or computer audio. If for any reason you'd like to change your selection, you can do so by accessing your audio pane in your control panel. Also from the control panel, you have the ability to submit the questions to today's presenters by typing your questions into the question pane. Please make sure you do so throughout the presentations and we'll answer them at the end. Any questions that we don't get to, we will collect and follow up after today's presentation. The recording of the webinar will be available about a week after the conclusion of today's presentation. So keep an eye out for that email. My name is Nihid Pokhril. I'm a partner solutions architect in the high performance computing team at Amazon Web Services, and I'll be your host and the moderator for today's webinar. Here is the agenda for the webinar today. First of all, I'll be introducing the speakers. Then we will look at the HPC life science la landscape at AWS. I'll then hand it over to AWS partner Weka.io and finally hear from Adam Wise, who uses Weka.io to accelerate their drug discovery process. There will be a question and answer session following the speaker's presentation. Joining me today is Shailesh Mandraker, Head of AI and Strategic Alliances at Weka.io and John Sorensen, VP of Technology Development at Adam Wise. Now, let's look at the high performance computing and life science workload in AWS. Life science customers on AWS are able to leverage the most foundational aspects of cloud technology, including scalability, flexibility, and agility, combined with security and global availability. High performance computing high throughput computing and high performance data analytics are becoming central to these digital transformation and lab of the future initiative as researchers and scientists start to derive information and knowledge from unprecedented volumes of unstructured data, including, including those from high performance computing and machine learning simulations. High performance computing workloads are truly heterogeneous in nature as highlighted here. Workloads like molecular dynamics and genomics are data heavy and highly benefit from high performance storage. On the other hand, virtual screening and pharmacokinetics are loosely coupled and do not demand high performance storage. The diversity of the workload is why a lot of customers are starting to run their workloads on AWS. They don't need to pick the hardware beforehand. The core of HPC on AWS is the compute that includes 350 plus instances, including CPUs, GPUs, and FPGAs, all catered to meet different kinds of workloads. For example, the latest generation compute optimized C5N instances based on Intel Skylake architecture can be used to run highly scalable codes or GPU instances featuring NVIDIA graphic chips for workloads like deep learning and with high visualization demand. To match the massive compute available, we also need a fast network and a high performing storage. AWS partner Weka.io offers a modern storage architecture that can handle the data hungry workloads and latency sensitive application. Weka can scale up to hundreds of petabytes while maintaining performance scaling. Weka supports cloud bursting and it's compatible with Amazon S3, allowing easy management of data that you may want to keep. With that, I'd like to hand it over to Shailesh for a deeper dive into Weka and how it adds value for life science customer. Shailesh, over to you. Thank you, Nihit. Thank you folks for joining us on this very exciting webinar. My name is Shailesh Manjrekar, I hear AI and Strategic Alliances here at Vikayo. 
and I'm very excited to be um, talking on this webinar along with our partner AWS and Atomwise, uh, who is an Weka customer uh, doing small molecular drug discovery uh, in AWS along with Weka. Little background about Weka: We are a cloud-native, next-generation um, storage um, <clears throat> parallel distributed parallel file system running in AWS. Uh, we have eight of the Fortune 50 customers today. We've been working with AWS for almost last five years and are an advanced technology partner with storage competency. Uh, we are backed by industries who's who. Uh, you can see the list of uh, names here, including all the big marquee um, IT vendors, uh, Cisco, HPE, NVIDIA. Uh, many of them are investors uh, in, in Wake Up. Uh, what that means is uh, they also help us from a go-to-market perspective. Uh, some of them OEM us, some of them resell us. Wicca also has several market customers. So we are we we claim that we are not an Swiss Army knife. We are a scalpel. Customers used us for solving a specific uh, business problem where they are facing uh, issues uh, with time to market and time to inside advantages. This is a, a list of customers. Uh, across different verticals, you would see customers like TGen and Genomics England uh, using uh, us in the pharmaceutical and life sciences vertical. You would see customers like Arch Platform as well as Untold using us in media and entertainment use cases. You would see customers like Nomura using us in the financial hedge fund and algorithmic trading use cases. And then finally, you would see customers like Atomwise and Vride using us for AI ML use cases. And of course, we'll be hearing uh, more about Atomwise use case and how we accelerate those GPU instances for Atomwise uh, in AWS. Uh, Weka in A AWS, uh, we today manage almost 230 petabyte of storage in S3 on a per yearly basis. So that's a huge amount of storage we manage today. Uh, in AWS for uh, the financial use cases, which I outlined primarily around financial services, life sciences, and green learning, the greenfield machine learning market. Uh, these are the three primary verticals which are growing uh, by leaps and bounds uh, in AWS. We are also available in AWS Marketplace and we are AWS Outpost certified. Uh, we are a pure SaaS offering in AWS Marketplace and we enable customers to bring their own licenses if they have a hybrid use case or they can purely deploy us in AWS Marketplace. Uh, we have a nice cloud formation front-end template uh, which it makes it easy to deploy Weka in AWS and this is really in a true sense cloud native file system with Kubernetes auto scaling and multi-protocol support. To highlight the value proposition of what Weka brings um, in the in the cloud, here is an um, uh, deployment uh, perspective of a typical data pipeline. So you would have edge devices, uh, whether they are IoT devices, sensor data, or market data, ima imaging data, um, been pushed into the cloud. And typically, where it lands, it lands at the landing zone, uh, which could be an object storage or an uh, NFS um, cluster. From there, it gets copied to either a local file system on an H HPC GPU cluster with leveraging local NVMe drives, or it also gets sent to a uh, purely HPC uh, cluster, which is separate from a compute. Then there is a backup copy or a DR copy uh, being used for NAS and object store. And then there is also data moors, which are copy that same data onto a long-term data lake, which then uses tape servers for a backup copy and so on. So as you can see, there are several moving parts to this particular deployment. It results into storage silos, and of course, multiple copies of the same data at multiple different locations. But more importantly, from a business perspective, this results into delayed time to insights, or delayed time to market, and a lot more complexity in terms of deployment. When you compare this with what Baker brings to the table, if I were to flip this around uh, and show you, uh, you know, um, before and after pictures, so this would be a lot more simplistic deployment where Weka becomes a single data platform 
uh, and consolidates all of those multiple copies. Uh, and this is, we are able to do this primarily because the performance advantage is what Weka provides, even in a public cloud environment, but also more importantly, because of the mix of workload handling characteristics, which Weka provides, as well as high performance with metadata IOs. So all of those different uh, storage silos can be consolidated into a single performance platform, which can cater to our entire pipeline where you're doing high speed ingest and you're getting to faster business outcomes. We are a multi-protocol data platform where you can do um, ingest using S3, you can expose using SMB or NFS, which are traditional protocols, but most of the performance advantages you gain with our POSIX agent, uh, which is a complete, uh, which exposes an entire POSIX compliant file system. We also work with next generation uh, GPU technologies like NVIDIA's GPU direct storage, which enables us to place data directly into GPU memory and provide almost uh, 162 gigabytes of throughput uh, for a single mount point. Uh, similarly, we also provide backup and DR, which is all integrated into the platform itself. And what this means is fastest outcomes for the business. Uh, you know, you, you can gain competitive advantages uh, for your data pipelines and so on. And you hear this uh, reiterated by Atomwise as they speak about the use case. Uh, particularly uh, for life sciences, we go after two different use cases. One is the genomics use case uh, where they we work with uh, customers who are using um, sequencers like one from Illumina. And the second use case is around cryo EM um, use cases where customers which are which are more proliferant for drug discovery where customers use us with cryo EA microscopes. Uh, both of these uh, devices have very similar workflows. Uh, if you look at the uh, data pipelines, both use for next generation sequencing as well as uh, for drug discovery using cryo EM. What you'll see is there are data generators, there are processing which happens uh, with BAM and FASTQ files, and then there is downstream analysis, and eventually you get to uh, the variant calling uh, in the genomics use case, or you get to drug discovery with the cryo EM use case. Uh, in both these workflows, the data challenges are very similar. Right? The storage platform needs to deal with small and big files. It needs to deal with several millions of files in a sing single directory. And this is a very challenging workflow uh, where Weka, because of its mixed workload and performance advantages, as well as the built-in data management, is able to cater to these workloads extremely well. Uh, this is an example of a genomics workflow. So we have a solution with NVIDIA's uh, Parabrix. Uh, if you are not familiar, Parabrix is actually Broad Institute's GATK toolkit now accelerated for GPUs. So um, NVIDIA bought Parabrix uh, a few years back, <clears throat> and we have a solution now for Parabrix uh, in AWS, where we are able to accelerate the data pipeline all the way by 72x. Uh, what this means is you are able to get uh, time to insights for genomics workflows way, way faster uh, being able to get to those var variant calling. Uh, this is an example of a customer, TGen, uh, who has been using us for genomics workflows. Uh, this uh, actually translates into advantages uh, for runs per hour. Uh, in this particular pipeline uh, for BCL to fast con con conversions and completions, Weka was able to almost uh, accelerate that concurrency by 6x compared to an existing vendor. So this again resulted into a direct high productivity gains for TGen. Our next example of is of a big pharma company uh, which was using, uh, which had a use case uh, for non-MEM, uh, FDA uh, drug discovery and approval. So they had a very bursty workload which was using almost 40,000 cores, and they could not get that many cores in a single availability zone. So they had to go across availability zones to be able to uh, bring together almost 40,000 40, CFI and instances. Uh, now when they, have, they had solved the compute problem, uh, the storage uh, problem was very unique, how to cater to this uh, large often uh, AWS compute instance um, was a problem at hand. And they tried several storage solutions, and eventually Weka was the only solution which was able to fare uh, and meet the requirements. So this was again a very 
impressive uh, use case for us uh, for drug discovery, for FDA drug discovery submission. Uh, and again, uh, this is an ideal use case for bursting workloads. And what this meant was almost 8 million in opportunity cost for the customer uh, for faster drug uh, submission time. And this was uh, opportunity cost per day. So huge gains in terms of, of productivity. Other customer, uh, wake up customer is Genomics England, who uses us both for on-prem and AWS deployments. They are hosting almost 2,500 researchers today on a wake up cluster, uh, which uh, translates on-premises all, all the way in AWS, as well as a DR side as well. And this particular use case is for uh, genomics, uh, uh, genomics discovery, uh, genomics variant discovery. Genomics England was um, tasked by the UK government for their 5 million genome projects, and we were able to successfully handle this particular use case. Uh, with that, uh, it's a big privilege uh, to um, call upon uh, John Sorensen from Atomwise, who is an Weka customer, and uh, John. Um... Great, thanks Shailesh. Um, I'm very happy to be here this morning to talk about how Atomwise is using Weka and AWS to accelerate small molecule drug discovery. And my name is John Sorensen, I've been heading up the technology development organization at Atomize. So a little bit about what Atomize is, is as a company. So we were founded about eight years ago uh, by Abe Heifetz and Izzy Wallach, and they were uh, grad students at the University of Toronto. They were working in the deep learning area right next to Jeffrey Hinton, who's, who's kind of famous in deep learning for the work he did on image recognition. And they were looking at this image recognition problem and saying, I think we can apply deep learning to molecular recognition. I think we, we can probably do something here that's gonna change drug discovery and use these modern AI methods. So they founded the company based on that principle and we now have about 80 people in downtown San Francisco. And we've been very successful to date. We've raised, um, recently we raised about 120 million in our most recent um, raise. And we've got several different large pharma partners and small pharma partners. Uh, some of the prominent ones that you might recognize, Eli Lilly, Bayer, Bridge Bio, Charles River. Um, we've been very successful in, in establishing partnerships in the pharmaceutical industry. So before I get into how we're using Weka and AWS, I want to mention just how would we approach drug discovery as computational people and, and using machine learning. I think this is a very interesting example where this is a particular protein from the coronavirus and this is the, what we're looking at here is the structure of the protein. And in order to interfere with the protein and knock out the coronavirus, what we're gonna to try to do is design a small molecule that's gonna to bind to this protein, lock into the protein structure and interfere with it. Uh, and if you kind of look at this rotating protein, there's this little molecule, it's gonna come back in a sec, little molecule it's binding. So the question is, how could we predict that, that molecule is going to bind to a protein structure? When you think about it that way, it actually looks a lot like a problem that AI is solving routinely nowadays, and that's image recognition. In the deep learning space, this is kind of a very prominent application where people have developed these architectures called convolutional neural networks to solve the image recognition problem. The way those networks work, is they'll consider an image, and if you can think about an image as a bunch of pixels, there'll be different layers of the network and with each layer, it's progressively recognizing higher level features in the image. So you start with pixels, but then the next layer is going to say, okay, these pixels group together as edges. And the next layer is going to say, I see these edges, they're coming together, and I'm now seeing eyes and noses and, and mouths. And at the very top layer, you put all those things together and say, okay, this looks like a particular face. I recognize this. Well, you can use that same insight architecturally to say, okay, well, let's let's apply that instead of images. Let's think about that as applied to molecules. And so here in this bottom picture, what we're looking at here is a protein structure with a particular small molecule bound to it. And we've developed a network that looks at it the same way as, as describing for images. In this case, instead of looking at pixels and grouping them together as edges and, and so on, we look at atoms and we say, okay, these atoms group together that looks like a particular functional unit. And these other atoms in that relation to that, this looks like it all comes together. 
this is a good binding uh, binding reaction that now the ligand is bound well to the protein and we can use that as a deep learning model for predicting what are good drugs for particular proteins so the model i'm describing it's fairly global in the sense that it can apply to almost any protein target and any particular small molecule and so because of that when we're thinking about a global model we have a big opportunity in front of us of what's the data that we can train on and in our case we can use quite a lot of protein structures but more than 4,000 protein structures we have access to a corpus with over 3 million compounds uh, and altogether that forms more than 15 million experimental measurements of how well does this compound bind to this protein it's quite a large amount of data maybe to put that into more perspective we, we take all of that particular data and every time we do a particular cycle of our data prep this is the, what it would look like as we take all the data from our source databases of course we have to do some cleanup the big hard part is we're going to take all these protein structures and all of these compounds and sample them against each other in various um, complexes that's a lot of compute there's several thousand cores involved several days of compute and a key part of that is that we need to write all of these files somewhere and that naturally a distributed workload like this you want to write to a distributed file system so our initial take was to put it all on s3 but the problem then is we have all of these files they're all living at s3 but we want to run machine learning on all of these small files and that's where we ran into interesting questions io wise so just to put that into more perspective we take these 30 million files and now we want to train a model with them well these models are fairly large they have over 5 million weights it can take anywhere from half a day to four days depending on the architecture that we've set up uh, and if you're familiar with machine learning that in our case is around 30 to 50 epics of training and what that amounts to is is quite a lot of random access file lookups and what you're doing when you're training a model like this with gpus are quite fast they're hungry for data you just want to feed as much data as you can into the gpu as possible uh, and so often the bottleneck and this was true for us the bottleneck really is an IO to the file system. And if you have a faster file system and faster IO, you ultimately get faster training times and you can iterate and do more experiments and, and learn more as a model. So that sets us up for what did we, how did we approach this problem at Atomwise? So in the, in the early days, we we're pretty small. We had only a few people and we didn't have so much data. So as you can imagine, we're able to handle our workload on a, on a single server, just a single multi-core server with a single uh, GPU attached and, and just a local file system. You know, so that's kind of where everyone would always start. As we grew bigger, we had more people, more ideas, more data. So we moved to the cloud several years ago and our, our choice was uh, AWS. And at that point we've experimented with a couple different file systems. And basically as we grew, as our data volumes grew and as the number of people grew, we kept on reaching a, a, a inflection point where we needed faster and more performant and more scalable uh, file systems. So we went through a series of iterations. Um, NFS, Amazon's EFS system was working very well for us. Uh, we transitioned to AWS Batch for our uh, on-demand computing, but everything was a little bit sluggish and we weren't getting the uptime that we were looking for. And so about a year and a half ago, we started to look around with how are we going to solve this problem? Uh, do we read directly from S3? Do we use a distributed file system like Cluster? And that prompted us to, to talk to Weka IO. And you know, to put this again in perspective, what our particular problem was is that we had all of this data at S3, but we needed to get it in front of our machine learning model in a, in a fast way. And one thing that I was excited about as, as the leader of my, of my particular organization is that we really wanted to not just do this once, but then now allow almost any of our developers to create file sets on demand and very large file sets, up to 5 million um, files, for example. We wanted to make it easy for them to create those data sets and then to train on those data sets. So there was a lot of on-demand writing, but then on-demand reading that's gonna be fast um, that we needed. So we talked to WECA.io and this turned out to be a very interesting solution for us. Um, and I think we were very good partners for how this, um, for their particular offering. See a little bit about our particular architecture. 
as I mentioned, we've been running using AWS Batch. Uh, and so using AWS Batch, we're setting up elastic computing um, on demand, and we could be running anywhere from zero to 10,000 instances on a particular day. Um, there's quite a lot of projects work going on at Atomwise. And so we, could, we have a burst uh, capacity to, to fairly large um, amounts of compute. We've, we're started off on AWS Batch more recently. We're now using uh, Kubernetes um, and the AWS EKS service for that. So with that type of elastic computing, we're able to feed the instances using a Weka cluster. And here we're using eight i3 EN xlarge instances. Those are all using an SSD drives for their backend. Uh, and that's supporting the entire architecture at this point. A little bit about how that looks if you're doing that in your own um, situation. So we needed to set it up so that we could both burst with a particular instance when it first starts up, we need to install the Weka client. And then so on this top uh, on this top pipeline, when we first set up the instance, the cloud in it will run, we'll install the Weka client, we'll mount the Weka file system and when Weka is available. In parallel, we're running containers uh, on these instances. And so here we're also setting up running Docker, getting the ECS agent launched, and then looking for the Weka mount. And so there's a bit of a parallel setup and since we're doing this at, at scale, that was I'm getting into it here because it, it was one of the things that we needed to, to figure out together with how do you do this in a reliable, scalable way. But we ended up solving it very uh, nicely. And with that in hand, I think this is the most exciting part of, of the slides, is that this is what we saw, uh, benchmarking our performance. And so the earlier solutions we're using EFS um, or essentially an NFS kind of mount back to a shared file system. And this is the AWS EFS system. So the types of performance we were getting earlier, uh, if we look at this top table of one gigabyte files, it would take about 319 seconds to write or a, a particular 319 milliseconds to write a particular gigabyte file. With Weka, we saw the times drop by a factor of 40X. So it was just amazing reduction in our uh, speed or reduction, increase in performance. Uh, so copying times and create times dropped uh, considerably. And what was really most important for us is this next table that small file uh, access was, was sped up quite a lot. And so earlier with the EFS, we were seeing, you know, for a thousand small files, we were seeing around 27 milliseconds. Um, and then that, that had dropped we, we moved to a general purpose, a general performance NFS nodes. We did drop um, improve the performance, but with Weka, we still saw a 3x speed up beyond what we were getting to before. So this really started to enable us to think about things that weren't happening so quickly before and, and try different experiments. And just for all of us, you know, if we none of us can just use our local MacBooks, but it is always true. It's always useful just to know that like, File systems really are faster if they're local, um, but Weka is really getting closer to that ideal. Um, and it's amazing because you're doing this at thousands of instances in the cloud at the same time. Yeah, so with that, I'd like to just kind of summarize where Atomwise has been with this. Um, we, it was very quick to set up a server and sync our S3 data to it. Once we started benchmarking it, we were very excited. This is just a really nice speed up in IO performance, uh, especially for the shared file system. Uh, problem that I think most of us are facing all the time. And so when we started benchmarking and translating this into our model training, we saw our model training times drop by up to 2x. And that really does validate that IO was a particular bottleneck for the models that we're running. When we set this up, there was a little bit of hiccups around just the amount of data that we were running through, the amount of compute that we were running at the same time. We're a particularly interesting case in that we're very bursty. As I mentioned, we'll run anywhere from you know, 10 to thousands of instances on a particular day. Uh, and, that's, and we'll scale them up and we'll scale them down fairly quickly. And so going the, the life cycle of that particular operation um, was kind of a new experience, I think, for Weka and for us. But we solved it together. And the Weka support team was great. They were very um, efficient and able to effectively debug uh, any issues that we found in our environment. And it, altogether, it worked out very well, very well for both teams. I think a, a final takeaway point for how that worked for us is that not only were our model times much faster, but there's this ability to write to S3 and read back very quickly using a Weka server uh, 
changed some of our just changed our game quite a lot. We could now consider experiments that earlier, because of all these headaches, it might take us three months to figure out how to run this particular experiment and get all of our ducks in a row. And now we could do those exact same experiments in, in just less than a week. Uh, so for me, it just really changed what our organization um, could think about and, and attack at the same time. Uh, and so for the cases like us, I think Weka IO is a, is a perfect match for when you're doing distributed deep learning uh, and you have quite a lot of file inputs. And once again, the Weka IO team has been very supportive in this whole process. So with that, I'd like to um, thank you for your time and I'm gonna hand it over to Nahit for further questions and answers. Thank you, Silish and John, for excellent presentations. Um, it looks like we've got some questions for you that have streamed in during the presentation. Um, the first one is for Shailish. Shailish, um, besides life science, what other verticals does Weka provide solutions for? Hey, thank you, Nihit. Um, yeah, we certainly have uh, solutions um, for other verticals as well. So the three prominent ones we focus is one which we heard today is about life sciences. Uh, the second one is also FinTech. So we recently uh, submitted a, to a stack benchmark, which is a third party securities trading council body, uh, which uh, runs benchmarks, which are then looked at by hedge funds and banks and um, financial traders uh, to uh, evaluate storage solutions. And we broke almost um, uh, seven records uh, within the stack benchmarks, um, which uh, are primarily focused around uh, what we call tick analytics and algorithmic um, trading use cases. So Weka has a very good um, uh, kind of a benchmark outcome uh, for financial services. And we also have uh, customers uh, in financials. And the third use case or vertical we go after is AIML. So clearly Atomwise has been an example of it where we are able to accelerate a drug discovery with GPU instances, but there are also other customers who are using us for uh, autonomous vehicles. Uh, they're using us for NLP, NLU, natural language processing, natural language understanding and so on. And that uh, customer base is growing as well, uh, primarily because of the same advantages what you heard in this webinar. Perfect, thank you. Um, another question for you again, can I use AWS spot instances for Weka clients? Uh, yes, for Weka clients, uh, you certainly can use spot instances. In fact, um, the way uh, Atomwise uses it uh, also uh, uh, using spot instances, and then you use uh, the Weka i3en instances for the storage persistence. Okay, so yeah, you can do, use that. We also now have um, auto scaling support at the storage layer as well to make it a lot more economical. Excellent. Another one, um, besides bursty workloads, if I have need for compute power for other workloads, how can Weka support those workloads? Uh, yeah, so if <clears throat> uh, there is a need uh, for bursty workloads, uh, that's very well uh, satisfied by using spot instances. There are other customers who, who use the clusters for extended uh, period of time. And I'm talking about the compute um, uh, compute elastic um, solution for, for the customers. Uh, the persistence comes from uh, the way Weka, run, uh, Weka runs in AWS, which uh, it runs on i3en instances, which have NVMe SSDs in it, and that provides uh, the persistence part. Uh, Weka can also take a snap to object, what we call a, a snapshot of an entire file namespace, and then move it into AWS S3 uh, storage. Uh, to be able to uh, bring it up uh, next time uh, you bring up the cluster. All right, thank you. Um, John, this one's for you. How big of a role does cutting edge technology provided by Weka and AWS play in your business? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, I, when I think about what we're doing at Atomwise, it really is only possible because of what we're able to do nowadays as a you know as an ecosystem with AWS and, and Weka. Uh, and what I'm thinking about specifically there is is the amount of data that we're looking at is just it's kind of unthinkable. But right? if you're a couple of years ago, people would just never have considered that you would process all of this data and throw it into a global model. 
normally machine learning proceeds with much smaller data sets, much smaller problems to attack. It's just very ambitious to think about a global model in this kind of space. Uh, and so, yeah, to me, it's it's really critical that you can have all this elastic computing, that we can have affordable access to, to massive um, computational workloads. Uh, and then the fact that we can get GPUs doing that uh, in a fast file system, pretty much nothing of this sort would be thinkable without you know having all of that ecosystem right there uh, enabling us at the same time. But yeah, I just think it's, it's 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 not just critical, it's pretty much unthinkable how you would approach this without without AWS and Micah. Thank you. Uh, next one for Shailesh again. In what ways can I use AWS S3 with Weka? What other AWS solutions are important to consider and how does Weka apply them? Uh, yeah, so as I said, uh, you can use S3 uh, for um, moving a snap to object. So snap to object uh, is essentially a snapshot of data as well as metadata. It's and it's uh, the file namespace actually uh, snapshotted and you can then move it to S3, you can move it to on-premises. So that becomes uh, your uh, basic building block uh, for moving the data around to different uh, other storage platforms if you have to. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, that's a good example. Other than that, we we certainly, as I said, we leverage AWS's auto-scaling um, um, feature set. We leverage uh, AWS EKS, uh, Elastic Kubernetes Service, uh, as John mentioned in his presentation. Um, yeah, so we are in general very, very well integrated in the AWS portfolio for high performance and life sciences. Thank you. This one's interesting. Atomwise use GPUs. Am I tied to GPUs? Can I use more traditional servers or storage and still get performance? Can I get something that's more processor based? But this for me, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, we, you certainly we we accelerate uh, compute instances uh, based on uh, CPUs as well. <clears throat> uh, GPUs uh, clearly are more um, frequented by customers who are doing um, leveraging uh, deep learning and 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 machine learning use cases. But there are several other customers like TGen, whom I mentioned, uh, was a, a CPU instance. A customer which was able to get almost 6x productivity gains uh, for their genomics pipeline. So yes, uh, both uh, CPUs as well as GPU-based compute instances will get accelerated uh, when you're using Weka. Right, thank you. Another one for you again. Um, Adam Wise, since like they're born in the cloud using AWS, if I'm a big enterprise with on-premise workloads and some key performance-oriented workloads I use on-premise, do I need to move it? How do I get the benefit of Weka for on-prem workloads? What does that flow or solution look like? Uh, yeah, so certainly we have uh, several customers who are using us on-premises and as I said, we are a purely software defined solution. So what that, uh, it lends itself extremely well for data portability. So it's the exact same bits, software bits, what you would use uh, with Weka, whether you're running it on premises, uh, whether you're running it in the cloud, or you're you, uh, using us at the edge aggregation point. Um, so what that does is uh, it enables your workloads uh, to move freely uh, from on premises uh, to AWS, uh, and um, uh, there is there is absolutely uh, no um, hook-ins or you know there is there's no issue of uh, data gravity uh, the customer has to um, care for. Thank you for answering those questions, John and Shailesh. Um, for the next steps, you can learn more about AWS for Life Sciences by going to aws.amazon.com slash hbc slash hcls. You can also learn more about Weka.io and Atomwise. Weka.io is also available in AWS Marketplace. Go check it out uh, in AWS Marketplace there. Um, and that is all we have today. Thank you for answering the questions. Please fill out the satisfaction survey after the webinar. And thank you all for attending.